the show where there are no penalties, nothing is offside, and everything is fair game. This is The Gloves Are Off. Welcome to another edition of The Gloves Are Off. I'm Moses Will doing a great show for you. Talking about the Oilers' woes, Bobcats, well, not quite there. They're never going to be there, let's be honest. They're, but they're struggling a little bit. And, of course, uh, we'll talk about Pat Quinn, a uh, great hockey mind that has just passed away recently. Uh, before we get to those topics, first I want to introduce my co-host, Greg Cannon. Hey, Moses. And we're pleased to be joined by Glenn Carroll, city manager here in the city of Lloydminster. How Thanks for having me, Moses. Glad to have you on. And I guess we'll start off with everything that's local and we know that the Bobcats are a big deal. And if you look at their recent stretch going into the games against Spruce Grove last week and against Camrose, everything was blue, everything was rosy. You look at where they were record-wise, the offensive, I guess, output they had against Grand Prairie, nine to three. All of a sudden, they lose big time to Spruce Grove, giving up eight goals. They get blanked at home, took tons of penalties in that process. And then follow that up with a shootout loss to the same team, the Kodiaks. Mm -hmm. So you look at that stretch against the top teams in the AJHL, both Spruce Grove and Camrose, they came out flat. Is this a, I guess, eye-opener for the Bobcats to know that we have a lot of work to do? Basically, is this team, the Bobcats, who we thought they were? Well, I think they are. I, I think they're a great team. I think they're very well coached. Yeah. I think um, if you're going to have your slump, now's a good time to have it, not in January. And I think, you know, under Gary's leadership and the leadership they have on the team, you got Lennon Springer there as their captain, who's a strong leader in my mind. Um, they'll turn the team around. It's, uh, and, and they don't have much turning to do. I think it's just tweaks here and there. And, and I think Gary recognizes that, and he's going to get the team going. Again, I believe... If this was January or February, it would be a different conversation. But I think now, late November, yep. before Christmas, they'll get those tweaks turned around, and I think uh, you'll see a different side on the other side of Christmas. I think they got a little slap in the face. Uh, they blow away Grand Prairie one night, then they go to Spruce Grove the next, and wow, uh, things can turn in a dime in that league. And I, I think more than anything, it's an adjustment period right now. Uh, I th right now, Gord and Gary probably don't have exactly where they want to be. Uh, but at the same time, like Glenn said, you got a lot of hockey to be played in December and January. And you got two great hockey minds in those two that are going to get this team moving in the right direction. And sometimes these losses are a good thing because Gord is one that says, you don't win, you don't learn a lot from wins, you learn more from losses. So if they can gain some kind of knowledge of what they did wrong against Bruce Grove, what they did wrong against a very good team in Camaros, don't fool yourself. They're one of the top teams in the nation. So when you lost in overtime in their own barn, that's a, build, a building block for that team right now. Yeah, I guess penalties were the biggest issue. They took 18, or gave up 18 power plays to these teams, got blown out by Spruce, three of six, and you look what happened, giving up nine or so, or seven or so, uh, to Camrose the following two nights. Now, you look at all that that's transpired. Are there any additional moves or anything that they're going to have to do to make themselves better? S see, and before we went on, it, this, it's going to get interesting. Trading deadline's January the 10th. Your two top goal scorers and top point production is coming from your back end, both 20-year-old defensemen. Defensemen are very tough to find at any level of hockey. So you have a great debate going on right now. I hate to throw it at Gary and Gord, but here you go. Do you trade these two 20-year-olds for next year because you are hosting RBC? So do you want to win now, or do you want to win when you have to win next year when you're hosting Nationals? And it's a great debate. Do you give up two 20-year-olds, and what does that say to your room? What does that say to the fans if you make one of those trades or both of those trades? Yeah, Greg's not totally wrong there. I don't give up a Springer. I think his leadership is too vital to the team. Um, not just being a local guy. He's been a winner wherever he has. Uh, I remember seeing him in Adam hockey, and that kid's a winner. He's always been a leader on the ice and off the ice, and I think you need that leadership to rub on to the next guys yeah. that are going to take over this team going into RBC next year. Calgary Stampeders, Hamilton Tiger Cats. Another addition of what we have as the Grey Cup. Last time these two teams met was back in 1999 in BC, ironically enough, and the Hamilton Tiger Cats became victors. Now you look at where both these teams have come from. You have a team that's been consistent throughout the year. Few injuries didn't matter. They found guys to plug holes. Now they're healthy. John Cornish looked fantastic in terms of what Calgary has done. Then on the other side, you had a team that was woeful for the first half of the year. All of a sudden, by a snap yeah. of fingers, turned it on. Went 8-2, and two, 
hosted a West or East final and looked absolutely amazing on special teams and defense. What can Hamilton do, and offense too, if Caleros actually healthy and moving? I like Hamilton in this situation over Calgary for a lot of reasons. Do you guys agree with that? Do you see that perhaps happening that the Tiger Cats might become victors? Well, for me, no. I, I, I think this is uh, Calgary's game to lose. They're going to have to do a total flop. Kudos to Hamilton. Most of those wins were against the East, which is, which is a weaker division anyway, a weaker conference. Calgary, Bo Levi Mitchell showing that he's a quarterback that belongs in the CFL. He's no longer the secondary quarterback or the third guy. He's the guy. Um, as you mentioned for Cornish, I mean, he's on fire. I think he could come in and play quarterback the way he's playing. He can play any position. What I love about the matchup, in my mind, the two best coaches in the league, Huffnagel and Austin, they are the premier coaches. And if Hamilton is to pull a win out, it's something that Austin got up his sleeve that uh, that can do it. So. It hurts me to say this because I really despise the Calgary Stampeders. <laughs> Even though you're wearing Calgary Red. Yeah, yeah, I'm wearing Calgary Red. Um, the Eskimos wanted to shut down the running game for the Stampeders on Sunday. They did. What do the Stampeders do? They have so many weapons. Cornish has one of the incredible screen passes that he runs all the way into for a touchdown. So I think the Stampeders have so many weapons on offense that the tie Cats, it's going to be a bend and break kind of day for them. So they're going to bend, but eventually they're going to break. If Calgary, or say if Hamilton has a chance to win this, what do they have to do? Obviously, you say stop John Cornish, but special what teams. Special where, does, teams. where does this game, if there's an X factor for Hamilton, what is it? Banks. Banks, banks, banks. If the Ticats hope to win, they have to have, you, what did he return? Three for a touchdown, two counted. Wow. If he does that in Vancouver, and, and really in a Grey Cup game like that, sometimes it's one or two plays that makes a difference. If he returns one for a touchdown, that could uh, result in, you know, at least the Ticats making it close and possibly even winning it. Oh, I think Mitchell and Cornish both have to go out with injury early in the game for the Ticats <laughs> to even have a hope. Maybe there's going to be something spiked in the Gatorade. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to take a commercial break. When we return, we're going to have more gloves are off and talk about the Edmonton Oilers and the Edmonton Eskimos. Fred Stamps, will he return to wear green and gold next season? Stay tuned. <laughs> 